expensive. You, you were the one, though, who convinced Warren to buy an electric car company in China, BYD, which is now, here we are a year later after first discussing this, opening its first Los Angeles offices. Um, you're extraordinarily supportive of the guy who runs BYD. It's a company that you initially said you might not understand. How did he convince you to put $100 million of Berkshire Capital to it? I think he threatened to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it took a pretty, it took a pretty rigor. I, no, I, it, the truth is he understood it. But I'm sure Bill understood it, and, and I didn't. But I, I had enough confidence in Charlie that in this game he knew a whole lot more about it than I did, and, and, uh, and uh, he's right. Bill, when you looked at the BYD investment, what jumped out at you about it? Well, it's a company that's got a great culture of invention. It's got a lot of engineers uh, moving very fast. What, 10,000 engineers, right? 15. Six, I thought it was 16, but it's 16. 15. Going up every minute. Yeah, going up every minute. Yeah, um, every minute. And <laughs> the <laughs> need for <laughs> batteries, uh, both in the car and the grid, uh, is pretty phenomenal. And... As a side business, they happen to make conventional cars, and they've done extremely well at that. Uh, the three of us are looking forward to going over later this year. We're going to actually look at this incredible company. The fellow is unbelievable that runs it, and Charlie uh, convinced me of that. How almost sad then, though, that now it's the U.S. companies that are finally coming around to making good quality cars. Charlie, what do you think? General Motors, for example. Well, I'm glad they're making better yeah, cars. It's true. Is it too late, though? Well, it would have been better if they'd gotten better earlier. The world benefits no matter where it comes from. I mean, you know, the fact that the fact that penicillin came from England doesn't mean we don't benefit from it. You know, it, it, it's not a zero-sum game in the world. We ought to be very happy if General Motors comes up with a wonderful electric car. We ought to be very happy if BYD comes up with a wonderful car. We're, it's it, it's the world will benefit, and and it's great that. Lots of people are finally paying attention. Bill, does it amaze you that, that Charlie and Warren are, well, Warren's going to turn 80 in August. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Maybe the only time to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Char Charlie's 86. Um, but these guys think like young whippersnappers who are at the height of their game. Absolutely. I <laughs> stand around them, invigorates me, helps me learn new things. I, uh, I love their youthful attitude. Well... We have a lot of fun. I like your attitude, Bill, and I'll be very happy when you're gone. <laughs> I'm happy when you're gone. <laughs> You'll have good memories. Uh, Charlie, Charlie's going to outlive me. But. <laughs> the auto company, I, I'd like to continue on this vein because, of course, we're looking at, at the Toyota situation where a brilliant car company that suffered some troubles here. So how does BYD think ahead to avoid that kind of problem, Charlie? Well... The, the companies that succeed are often the ones who just improve better and faster than the competition and just keep doing that. And that is the essence of BYD. And uh, I see not the slightest flagging in their ambitions to keep doing things better and better. And they're willing to pour enormous engineering resources and enormous... Uh, failures for a long time, like Edison, in order to get improvements. And of course, not only do I admire that, I think it's, it's likely to work. And they have a way of, you've got a brilliant fellow on top, and they have a way of implementing his ideas very quickly and effectively. I mean, uh, uh, there's no ossification, and you know, many American com companies obviously have suffered from that, uh, perhaps Berkshire Hathaway in some ways, but when they decide to do something, it gets done. I mean, they have very high expectations of themselves, and they meet it. Well, as we wrap up here, you know, uh, we could learn a lot, certainly, from Chinese companies, but how optimistic are you, and I'll start with you, Bill, about America really going forward now after a very difficult, uh, historically terrible time for many people? Well, we're still working our way out of it. Um, you know, the state budgets will, will be tight because they'll be getting less from the federal government. Um, but we're working our way out of it. The innovation is still there. And it's very much a global system. Um, you know, I toured uh, college campuses last week and met some of the, the bright kids who are thinking not only about innovation, but also about innovation that reduces inequity. So, you know, we're way better off than, than ever. And this is going to be a, a great time for the country. Charlie, do you have fear, hope, or a little bit of both? Well, 
I think the relative place of the United States in the world is almost sure to go down. That doesn't mean that the U.S. won't keep gaining in welfare. It just means other people are gaining in welfare faster because they come from a lower base. And to some extent because they copied us. I yes. Mean, we, have, we have a terrific system that we've exported the system uh, to some degree and, and people have learned from it. But when you think of a country that gone through a civil war, you know, a couple of great wars, great depressions, panics, all kinds of things. And in the end, decade by decade, people live better in this country. And I think it is a lead pipe cinch that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, people will be living better than today. But looking at you traversing that floor on Saturday, uh, it seemed like you were full of ideas, full of hope and vitality for the future. Is that how you see it? Yeah, and so are the American people. I mean, you know, they, they, they may run into roadblocks occasionally or the system may get messed up. The engine may have some hiccups, but it works over time and it'll keep working. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Bill Gates, thank you once again for appearing here together. It, it's, it's so valuable, I think, for our viewers to hear your perspective. I thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Same time next year. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Stuart, okay. great.